Hello, and welcome to the sixth video in the Basic ECL Concepts video series. In this video, we will briefly cover ECL's most commonly used transform functions. The ETL process, Extract, Transform, and Load, the standard data ingest process, is all about taking data in one form and transforming it to another. And that's where ECL's transform functions come into play. ETL processes in most languages are basically simple loop constructs that handle each record in an input data set in turn to produce a result set. As a declarative language, ECL needs another mechanism to do this since there is no loop in declarative code. Remember, in ECL, we are always defining what we want, not how to do the job. The transform function is the solution to that problem. A transform function definition always has a specified result type, the record structure defining the layout of the record set the function produces. Transform functions always produce a record set result. The name of the function always takes parameters, making it an ECL function. The expression begins with the keyword transform and ends with the keyword end. Within the structure are as many of the self.out field is defined as transformation expressions as are required to fully define what goes into every field in the result type record structure. The keyword self here is referring to the res result record being created. Out field is the name of some field in the result type record structure and the transformation expression defines the content of the result field. The key thing to understand about transform functions is that they never exist alone. They are always inextricably linked to the operation that calls it. There are 10 operations in ECL that use transform functions. The simplest of those operations is project, which simply passes one record at a time from its input record set to the transform function. Since the transform is always specific to the operation using it, the documentation for each operation specifies the exact form a transform for that operation must take. In this case, the transform for a project must take at least one parameter, a keyword left record that is the same format as the input record set, and optionally a keyword counter integer parameter that counts the number of times the transform function is called, a simple loop counter. The resulting record set can be different format from the input record set. So in this example, we are defining the YP Slim record set as the result of projecting one record at a time from the file yellow pages through the Slim YP transform function. The transform function takes two parameters, a record from the file yellow pages, referred to as the L parameter, and an integer value, referred to as the CNT or count parameter. Neither of these parameters is omittable, so therefore the function call must pass something, but there is nothing reasonable to pass, which is why the keywords left and counter are so important. Left, in this context, indicates a record from the left data set, in this case the file yellow pages, and counter specifies that we want the internal loop counter to be available for use within the transform function. The YP Slim rec record structure defines the layout of the resulting record set. The transform function must define what is going in to every single field in this structure. The self.seq is defined as count line of code, defines the value going into the resulting sequence field as the loop counter value. The first record will be 1, second 2, and so on. The self is defined as L line is shortcut syntax that basically says, I've dealt with all the fields that I need to explicitly handle, so I'll let the compiler move the rest of the data straight across from the L input parameter to output fields on a field name by field name basis. This is a typing shortcut that means we don't have to explicitly type in self.name is defined as l.name semicolon, self.street is defined as l.street semicolon, etc., etc., etc. Remember, this is not executable code, but simply a definition of what transformation needs to occur to produce the resulting record set. The executable code is generated by the compiler for us. Let's take a look at a functional example. We have a five record data set with two fields in each record. 
The output record structure starts with the same two fields and adds a third field, a string four called cat values. We produce the cat rex record set by projecting one record at a time from our sum file input data set through the catthem transform function. Note that the data type of the first parameter to the transform is the name of the data set itself instead of its record structure. This is perfectly appropriate in this context. It is the data set acting as its record structure to define the layout of the input records and writing the code that way makes it a little easier to see that this transform is expecting input from the sum file. The cat value field content is constructed by concatenating the contents of the value 1 and value 2 field from the input record with the dash and the string value of the loop counter. The shortcut then handles the other two fields. So here we see the result of the project. CG produces the CG1, CC produces the CC2, and so on. And here we see a graphical representation of what we just did. The CG record is sent to the transform, which produces the CG1 result record. Then the CC record is sent to the transform to produce the CC2 record, and so on. Another commonly used transform function is rollup. Rollup is similar to dedupe, but instead of simply eliminating duplicate records, rollup passes the matching records to a transform function allowing you to create a best composite record by letting you cherry pick which data to keep from each record. It all depends on how you write your transform function. In this example, note that the transform function's result type record structure and the left and right input structures are exactly the same. This is always the case with a transform for a rollup operation. Rollup only checks contiguous records, so the input record set must be sorted so that the duplicate records are together. In this functional example, we have a five record data set that we're going to roll up based on duplicate value one fields. So the first thing we need to do is sort the record set so that the duplicate records are contiguous. Then we can do the roll up on the sorted records, looking for matching values in the value one field. If a record has no match, it goes directly into the result set. Matching records are passed to the transform function. Since the purpose of rollup is to create a best composite record, the transform contains the logic that allows us to choose the best data to keep. In this case, we want to keep the lower of the two values in the value 2 and value 3 fields. When the rollup is complete, the resulting record set contains the three unique value 1 records along with the lowest values in value 2 and value 3, AB3, BG4, and CC1. And here we see a graphical representation of what we just did. The AX3 record is compared to AB5. They match, so they go to the transform to produce the AB3 record. The AB3 record does not match the BG4 record, so it goes directly into the result set. The BG4 record does not match the CX1 record, so it goes directly into the result set. The CX1 record does match the CC2 record, so they go to the transform to produce the CC1 record. Join is the operation that does most of the heavy lifting in our ETL work. It bangs two record sets together looking for matching records based on the condition that you specify as to what constitutes a match. The matching records are sent to the transform function to produce the result set. The default join type is an inner join, but we also support all the other possible joins, left outer, right outer, full outer, left only, right only, and full only. In this example, we have two data sets with three records each. And we'll demonstrate all seven join types by matching records based on their value one field. You can see we have matching C records and matching A records. 
The X record in the left file has no match in the right file, and the B record in the right file has no match in the left file. The result record structure for the transform function will show us the matching field value, value 1, along with the value 2 fields from both the left and the right. Since we always want to see the matching value, the self.value1 transformation detects which record contains a value and uses that. The other two fields just show us the value 2 fields from both the left and the right record. We're using this same transform for all seven joins, and here is the result. The inner join results in just the two matching records. The left outer join results in the two matching records along with the XB record from the left. The right outer join results in the two matching records along with the BY record from the right. The full outer join results in the two matching records along with the XB record from the left and the BY record from the right. The left only join results in only the non-matching record, the XB record from the left. The right only join results in only the non-matching record, the BY record from the right. The full only join results in the non-matching records, the XB record from the left and the BY record from the right. And here we see a graphical representation of the two most commonly used join types, inner and left outer. For the inner join, just the matching records are passed to the transform function. For the left outer join, in addition to the matching records, the non-matching XB record on the left is passed to the transform function along with an empty record on the right. Okay, let's briefly restate the things we've just gone over. One, the transform function is the key to doing ETL processing in ECL. It never exists alone. It is always linked to the operation that uses it. Number two, project is a simple looping operation. Three, rollup is like a smart dedupe. And four, join does matching and linking between data sets. This concludes this video. Thank you.